All right, so I'm going to show you some of Ableton 9's new MIDI editing improvements. Some very cool stuff that's happening here. So let's go ahead and just get started. So we've got our, our MIDI clip right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is come into the notes section. Now I can half and double the speed with these. I could reverse the order of the notes just by hitting reverse. So this will move over to this side and this will move over, over to this side, like so. Inverting means that this, what's here on the bottom will move up to the top note and what's on the top note will move to the bottom note and so forth. So that could give you a lot of creative options. Now legato is pretty cool. Let me get in here real quick. So if I select a note and hit legato, what it's going to do is it's going to butt this note all the way up against the next note in the pattern. So as you can see, it'll stretch that note. So I could go and select any notes and hit legato and it'll stretch up to the next note. Duplicate loop is something that I've wanted for quite a while. By hitting this, it just doubles the length of the loop. Now up here in the notes section, this is a new feature here, so I could select either a particular note or I could highlight a bunch of notes and say, oh, I want to bring it up five semitones. So all I got to do is just hit five and then it will bring that up and as you can see, it shows the notes and it also shows you the amount of semitones that's up. So that way, if I wanted to, I can go minus five and bring it right back down to where it was. I could also enter in a key. so. As you can see, this starts on a, a G sharp three. I can go ahead and make that, let's say, uh, a C4. Now, as you can see, the lowest note will start on a C4 and then everything else will fall into place. Now, if I put a minus and then put C4, then what'll happen is the highest note will play a C4 and then everything else will follow suit. Also, you have the ability to stretch the notes. So as you can see, if I highlight all of these here, I've got these little warp icons and I could just drag this. And as you can see, I can stretch or reverse or do whatever I want with it. But you could also take this a step further. So you could highlight these. And as you can see, just by hovering in the middle, I can grab a certain section and move to the left or right. And as you can see, it'll stretch accordingly, dependent on where I'm grabbing the stretch point. Now, if I switch to a quarter note resolution or whatever, what you'll see is within this grid section, actually, let me make it even bigger than that. So we'll make it half a bar. So with this bracket, all I've got to do is I can drag within this grid and it'll kind of lock on the ends, but I can drag anywhere in between the grid. Afterwards, it will jump to the next logical grid place. But within this area, I can fine tune the point that I want the note to start or the note to end. Now, if I want full range, I could just hit the command key and drag, and I'm not bound by any of the uh, resolution at all. In the envelope section, now it only takes one click in order to create automation instead of two clicks, as you can see. One click will create the envelope, and another click will get rid of it. In the notes section here, if I hold down B, it will toggle between this mode here, where I can enter in notes with one click, whereas if I'm in the regular cursor mode, it takes two clicks to enter and remove. The moment I let go of the B key, it'll switch back to the cursor. Now, if I just quickly hit the B, it will just switch over. I can do all my fine tuning and editing without holding down the key, and then I can hit the B key again, and it changes back to the cursor mode. This will also work on the envelopes. So I can hold down B 
and make resolution based edits. And when I let go, I can get back to the regular edits with the cursor. The zero key is pretty cool. If I've highlighted a track, then by hitting zero, as you can see down here, it will turn that track on and off. Now, if I'm on a specific tool or instrument and I've got that selected, then zero will turn that instrument on and off. If I've clicked on this effect, the same thing, zero will turn it on and off. If I hit the Q key, what that does is it automatically jumps into hot swap mode. So I've got this effect that is selected. I hit Q and now it automatically shows me what I have available to swap with. So I could either swap for a different preset or I could choose another effect. So let's say I want uh, auto filter instead. I'll just double click that and now it becomes an auto filter. If I click on the sampler instrument and hit Q, obviously you could see it's going to give me instrument settings. So I could change the instrument just as easily. I could say, oh, I don't want a sampler. I want a drum rack. And now this part is, is now a drum rack. This was available in Ableton 8, but if you highlight a MIDI note and hit the command key, by dragging up and down, you could change the velocity. You'll see it notice down here. So I could actually highlight a number of keys as well, hold down command, and I can affect them all at the same time as well. So those are some new MIDI editing features in Ableton 9.